Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Katamari Forever. I'm Dylan, your host, and we are here at the Cousins and Presents area because now feels like as good a time as any to return to form, to go back to basics, so I'm going to get the prints here. And furthermore, I'm going to head over to the present stand where I feel that it's about time to remove this ridiculous giraffe from our head. As nice as it may be, it's time for the giraffe to move along. The glasses and belt can stay for now, I quite like those. Because we are returning to basics for the purpose of going to our next stage. Here in the Robo King's Cosmos, we have Make a Star 4. Wait, there it is. Yeah, see, just like it says, make a star four, as large as possible. So, let's get rolling. Yes, as large as possible, seems like a pretty vague title. It's um, about what you would expect from any Katamari stage, and in fact, this isn't the only as large as possible stage in this game, but it is called that because that is the sole goal here. There's no secondary objective, no gimmick, simply getting as large as possible in the classic fashion. Because this stage, this stage so titled Make a Star 7 in this game, is in fact Make a Star 4 from the original game. Yes, at long last, now what is this, 17 episodes into this series, we are finally back where we started in Katamari Damashi. I'm back in my comfort zone, in my wheelhouse, so hopefully I won't mess this up too badly. But it is possible that I will do so because this is not an easy stage. You may remember, Make a Star 4 was the final stage here in the house. And it was not an easy one. We're going to have to pay close attention to what we're doing in order to succeed here. Though it is a little bit easier this time around. In any case, let's get rolling as soon as the Robo King shuts up here. He's saying we have 5 minutes to get to 1 meter. We're currently at 5 centimeters, so that's quite a ga gap to bridge, but I think we can handle it. Now, the first stage of this stage, <laughs> the first phase of this stage, I guess, is extremely important because there are not a lot of objects on this stage, so you kind of have to make sure that you get it, all of the objects of one size category and then move up to the next. And this like opening little table area here is kind of a microcosm of what was challenging about the original Katamari Damashi. Like the density of objects in the original game is a lot lower than it is in the later games, partly for technical reasons, partly I'm guessing because um, they were still taking their time like figuring out the right balance of, of things in this game. So there were fewer objects around and there were fewer objects within each size category. So you had to kind of go out of your way to hunt down objects of certain sizes before moving on to the next ones. Right now I'm trying to remember where the Lego house is. All right, it's down there. Yeah, I know the, the next object we need. So we cleared off the objects on the table one category at a time. We had to make sure we got all of the objects of one size before moving up to the next one. And like I was saying, that's like a microcosm of this entire game. Because there are fewer objects to spare, it's important that you understand what objects are in the size for you to be rolling them up, get them all, and then move along to the next size. And so I got everything on the table, and then I moved down to the Lego house, and then I moved over to the parsley. Now I'm continuing my way around this room in a counterclockwise fashion, getting those batteries there, picking up all the mice I see along my way, and then I'm going to hit these paperbacks, which signifies that it's okay for me to go outside, even though the King of All Cosmos told me it was okay for me to go outside when I reached 10 centimeters, or in this case the Robo King. Now we're going to perform a little bit of a sequence break here, using the uh, Prince Hop to get these ping pong balls earlier than intended. There was obviously no Prince Hop in the original game, so the stage is designed in such a way that it assumes you won't have the Prince Hop, so we're able to, like I said, perform a minor sequence break there, getting those ping pong balls, and they are quite useful. Pushed us up to 20 centimeters, which means that we can now go underneath the house, which we'll be doing pretty soon here. Uh, because there are very few objects in the outside area here on Make a Star 4, especially compared to some of the uh, other stages in this game, like the Swan stage, which have uh, a really densely populated outdoor area. And now we're going to kind of go as quickly as we can under the house because there's nothing down here but spiders, and then we're going to jump up and we're going to be in the bathroom here if we can get up through the bathtub. It's uh, a little bit narrow if you've, like I have, gotten up to a decent size by this point. Hmm. 
Yeah, see, the stage was not designed with the Prince Hop in mind, like I said. Otherwise, the bathtub would probably be a little bit wider, but it, it's mainly there to function as a, a one-way down passage because you weren't expected to be able to jump. So, we picked up the toilet paper, and now we're going to head outside here. I think we're going to grab these milk things. Have to get 50 centimeters before we go too much further outside, but we can grab these soldiers, and then I'm going to wrap back around inside. Are we large enough to pick up pigs yet? No, not yet. Okay, so the next most important object to be able to pick up is the pig, because there is a broken heart. There are two broken hearts on this stage. There's that one right there, which uh, we passed up the opportunity to get earlier because there weren't a lot of objects around our size to be able to capitalize on it. But the other one, the one on top of the pigs, which is an instantaneous one, uh, as opposed to the other one, which is the, the lasting variety. Oh yeah. This, uh, this kitchen here, by the way, I mentioned in the last episode that Nick stood in front of a refrigerator, and uh, this was the stage in which you found Nick in the original game. Well, technically, it was uh, Eternal 1, but Eternal 1 was just a uh, variation on this stage, Make a Star 4. The cousin for this stage, Make a Star 4, is Johnson, who will actually be getting here on Make a Star 7 pretty soon, so uh, keep that in mind. Alright, so we were big enough to pick up the pigs, so we got the Royal Heart, and we're now uh, beyond 50 centimeters, which means we, that we can go e anywhere. We're currently at 64 centimeters, one minute on the clock. You can tell I'm speaking quickly because this is a pretty intense stage. Like, you have to have your route optimized. This was true, especially in the original game where you didn't have the Royal Hearts to go off of. But like, yeah, as you can see, we haven't reached the goal yet and um, we're down to 50 seconds. That's okay though, there's still time to pull this one out. We're at 74 centimeters right now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get up to 95, because once I'm 95, I'll be able to get these fences, and from there it's easy. These crates... Oh, crap. All right, we can't pick up the crates. All right, I might actually be screwed here. That really, really sucks, because I didn't even get a royal present, or... Well, forget the royal present. That wouldn't have done me any good anyway. Oh, yeah, we have that heart. Okay, we're good. We got the, the heart. That's right. I forgot that I was leaving that there, that that was still waiting for us. Yep, no problem. Stage finished reached one meter. Problem is, no cousins, no heart, er, no presents, so we're gonna have to be doing this again, but at least we succeeded. We passed the stage. Maybe I can get in this window and grab a royal present before time runs out, because there is one right around here on this table. Nope, did not get it. I was super close, though. Uh, all right, well, time's up. Robo Rainbow! Yeah, that's a shame that I did not do better than that. Like I was saying, that's my home turf, that's my wheelhouse. I know the original game far better than any of the stages in this game, so I feel that I've let you down a little by merely succeeding that time around. This stage really feels like it should be six or seven minutes and not five. It's like so stressful. Just, just completing the goal in that time, and like I'm saying, this is a stage I know. I can only imagine that someone who had never played the original game would probably get hung up at this point for a little while. They might have to play this stage a few times just to be able to pass it let alone get uh, all of the collectibles. Oh man, and there's a there's a shooting star on this stage too. Crap, okay. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that. That was a challenging one to get. Maybe, this may have been the hardest stage to get a shooting star on in the original game. And furthermore, to unlock the eternal version in the original game, you had to get an extremely large Katamari on this stage. That was difficult too. So yeah, this, this stage was kind of a bottleneck in the original game as I remember. And, like I'm saying, I think it might be here too. In any case, we got a rainy day star worth 27 points, 1 meter, 18 centimeters, 3 millimeters, but we're going to have to do a lot better than that, and we still have a lot of things to collect here in just a moment. And we're back, giving this one another go. I feel like I did everything right last time, up until the point that I forgot to get the second heart. So I'm going to have to try to remember to get that second broken heart a little bit sooner this time, and hopefully that'll pay off. Also, I guess I could have done this first part just slightly faster because I didn't pick up the Mahjong pieces first. See, I need to get these caramels, and then I need to flip around, and then I need to get the Mahjong pieces before anything else. So grab those tiles, and then come this way going um, counterclockwise, whereas I went clockwise last time. And oh crap, you still have to get the batteries before the erasers. So I guess there's not like uh, a perfect pattern. I guess the way I did it this time was just as good as last time because there's still that extra turnaround in there. Yes, yes, we reached 10 centimeters, which means we can go that way, but I don't go that way. Um, you can climb up onto that iron there and get outside sooner, but there is zero, zero reason to do so. You do not want to go outside until you've picked up those paperbacks because there's almost nothing outside and you 
the, like the purpose of the outside is to get under the house from here and you can't do that until you reach 20 centimeters and getting from 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters using only what's outside would be daunting. I don't, I, I scarcely know that it's possible. I doubt it is. All right, so we're going uh, counterclockwise here, picking up rats and things. I'm gonna get these batteries, and then I should be, once I pick up a couple of rats, up to paperback size. Paperback size, maybe the most important size on the stage. And yeah, it's just crazy that you have to think about this stage in that way. Like, every object is so vital here. And there are very few objects, or there are very few stages in this game that are quite like that. Even in the original game, uh, not every stage was this intense, but it was a lot closer. The challenge in this game comes from different things. Uh, well, like the cow bear stage, for example, is more challenging than the individual cow and bear stages from the original game. Um, the gimmick stages in general tend to be challenging in different ways. Okay, so I was 27 centimeters when I was here last time, which made it kind of hard to get through the bathtub because I was only 23 centimeters this time. I was able to jump up on my first try, which is nice, but unfortunately I'm not big enough to get... Okay, now I'm big enough to get toilet paper. All right, so I lost a little bit of time not being able to roll up the toilet paper the first time I tried to, but I was able to compensate for that. And, uh, alright, so also, last time I went directly outside after coming up to the bathroom. This time I'm going into the child's room. I'm gonna try to pick up some toys here. Um, this is not really a great place to be in general, though, so we're gonna try to get up here onto the kitchen counter, which is something I completely avoided last time, which was a mistake. There are a lot of smaller objects here up on the countertop and the kitchen table, so we're gonna grab these. There's a royal present here, which is the one I was trying to get at the very end last time when time ran out but um, it was not to be. That's actually in the same location as the royal present in the original game, and the original Make a Star 4 of the first game. So, yep, that's another familiar one. Also, Johnson is back where he was in that original stage. And like I said, we'll be seeing him in a little while, though. I don't know. Getting Johnson is actually really, really hard, so um, probably not going to be doing it on this run. I might have to make a third, dare I say, even fourth attempt at this stage. But let's keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't come, or that it doesn't go too much longer than that, in any case. Alright, so let's print hop up here, roll over this way, and I'm going to get the, um, the other broken heart and probably the other royal present inside the house now. Um, let's see, broken heart's right over there, so let's jump. <laughs> that jump may have, oh yeah, yeah, that jump was definitely unnecessary and cost us some time. That's okay, get the heart. All right, not a lot of things to get with the heart, but it's still nice to have. I guess we can... yeah, okay. That was nice. We were able to use the heart to grab some fence pieces, which pushed us up to one meter. And, uh, let's see, we need to go back to the bathroom. That's where the... yeah, that's where the remaining royal present is, and it's right there. It's made a little bit easier by the prince hop. I don't think that there was ever an object there in the original game, so I don't think that... This um, this qualifies as something made easier by the Prince Hop. I think this qualifies as something that was added there with the Prince Hop in mind, which is something that I was saying I liked about this game in the past, which was that some of the royal presents were in otherwise hard to ac access places. And oh yes, let's uh, grab the one off the kitchen table too. I almost forgot about that one because I had talked about it previously. I just kind of assumed that I had grabbed it, but no, I had, I had been there when I was much smaller. Alright, so we got two royal presents, we've met the goal, and we've got 38 seconds on the clock. We might actually be doing it here. I didn't think we were on track to, uh, to get the Johnson here, but we actually are because we still have 30 seconds. Alright, so up here on the rooftop there's a casino. So we're going to grab Pachinko Machines and Lucky Cats, then we're going to try to get Johnson. He, can, he runs away from you. Yeah, we got him! Okay, so here's the thing. Johnson is deceptively large. He looks like he's pretty small, but he's actually counted in the game as being larger than the pachinko machines around him, so it's possible to roll up every object on the roof but Johnson and still be unable to get Johnson himself. It's ridiculous. Um, but, looks like we did it. Fingers crossed that we got the shooting star too, because that would mean that we literally got everything in two runs. That's incredible if that's the case. So, let's find out. Robo Rainbow! Yeah, really hoping to see a comet when we get here. That would be, that would just be incredible. It would make my day. I was kind of hoping actually that this would be a little bit of a longer episode because uh, the last couple have been pretty short, but whatever, that's not my primary concern. I am trying to do this efficiently. 
So, let's not stretch out things longer than they need to be. Let's just get the shooting star right now. Show it to me. Oh yes, we mostly got playtime things, also drinks and games. Total of 752 objects. That's quite a lot. 60 points! Alright, that's pretty good for this stage. Um, the uh, added ease from the uh, Broken Hearts is kind of counterbalanced by the fact that the scoring on this stage is pretty harsh. Uh, if you merely get like a meter five centimeters or something, which is, you know, a pretty good score, really considering how hard the stage is, that's only like 12 points out of 100, which is just awful. In any case, there's a royal present, you can guess what that is, and another one, guess also what it is, all aboard. <laughs> And Johnson, the cousin from the rooftop, we got him as well. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the Village Square, Johnson. We're going to make a star, not Stardust. We're going to turn the old rainy day star to Stardust. And the enjoyable star, 60 points, will be taking its place. Enjoyable indeed, it was. Come on, show me a shooting star. Big bucks, no whammies. Yes! Okay, we got it. We got the comet. Wonderful. Confirmed for Brawl. And that's all we've got to do for now. Let's go check out those royal presents before we call it a day, though. Our doggedness admired by the Robo King. Now, yes, yes. Updating network rankings, saving, la da da. Let's go check out those royal presents. And I do believe we'll be able to wear them both at once. I don't think they take up the same slot. Right back here. We were just here a few moments ago before we started the stage. Okay, so we got, first of all, the harmonica. Very nice. Following that up with... Choo-choo! Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time.